I have a really good sized stack of translated fiction to show you. But first, Hey Booktube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March, and th today is a book haul. I have a stack of translated fiction to share with you. This is, it's almost like a series of book hauls. Yeah, because I had a nonfiction book haul, I had a Kindle book haul, I had a fiction book haul, and this is translated fiction. And I'm going to say... Uh, my bank account is much smaller, so these book hauls will cease <laughs> for a while. I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna, not gonna do this much anymore for the foreseeable future, but I'm not promising anything. But so many of these are so interesting. I wanted to show them to you, and I've really enjoyed discovering um, translated fiction, and it's interesting because... Well, not interesting, but the majority of the books I purchased are from very similar parts of the world. So I don't know what that says. I think the next time I buy translated fiction, I'm going to branch out quite a bit more around the world. But you'll see the patterns that I'm talking about for, for good or bad. Uh, I'd love to branch out more and look in different places to find really good books. So let me start showing them to you. Like I said, I've got quite the stack and I'm hoping not to spend too much time on each one. Well, that's gonna be tough. This, the first one is Purge by Sophie Oksanen. This is translated from the Finnish. And let me get to that page by Lola Rogers. Now I'm gonna say right here, I did practice and listen to the author's names in order to hear how they're supposed to sound. And I may not get it right, and I may not pronounce it very well, but I am going to do my best. So this is Purge. And this I saw on BookTube, I don't remember where, it was a while ago. But I've heard some kind of interesting things about this book. This is a, kind of a story of two women who are haunted by their past. And... One of the women, Ali, Ali Eid, true, an older woman, she's living in alone in the Estonian countryside, and she finds a young girl disheveled in her front yard, and she kind of is thinking, should I, should I get involved? But she ends up bringing her into her house, and it, they kind of discover um, coincidences about each other, and. The young girl's name is Zara, and she is running from um, her captors, and they, it's discovered that she's a sex trafficking victim. So there's a lot of, I think, backstory discovery, um, things that they, the two find in common, and how they interact. So yeah. The next one is Death in Spring by Merci Rodarita. I am not pronouncing that very well. This is translated from the Catalan by Martha Tennist. Tennant, I apologize. And it's hard to see. This is a really interesting cover. Um, this one is about, she's a um, poet. I believe she's a poet who wrote the novel. And it tells the story of a bizarre and destructive customs of a nameless town through the eyes of a 14-year-old boy. He struggles to come, come to terms with the town's uh, ritualistic violence and brutality with his wild teenaged stepmother. He discovers something pretty disturbing. So it, it sounds kind of creepy, <laughs> but, but I'm here for it. <laughs> and yeah. The next one is Carmen Bolosa, Before, translated from the Spanish by Peter Bush. This is a really short one. This author is um, a poet, and this was originally published in 1989. Uh, this was the first novel she ever wrote, although it was the second novel that was published. And this is the story of a woman who returns to the landscape of her childhood um, to rebuild her past and regain her innocence, it says. And she must overcome the fear that held her captive as a young girl. 
This is a very slim one. The other thing I notice is a lot of the translated novels that I'm finding are, are short. So I don't know if that's a regularity or if it's just simply the ones that I was um, attracted to. The next one is Three Strong Women by Marie Indiay. Indiay. And this is translated from the French. And that is my computer notification, if you heard that. Translated from the French by John Fletcher. And this is the story of three women who say no. When I read that first sentence, I'm like, I don't care what the rest of it is about. I'm just fascinated already. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this author is French. And it is about Nora, who is a French-born lawyer, lawyer and finds herself in Senegal, summoned by her strange father to save another victim of his paternity. Fanta, who leaves a contented life as a teacher in Dakar to follow her boyfriend back to France. And his depression and, and dislocation are poisonous and toxic. And the third woman, Katie, a penniless, penniless widow put out by her husband's family with nothing except the name of a distant cousin in France. So, um, looking forward to that one. This one is Umami by Leia Jufresa, and she is a Mexican author. This is translated from Spanish by Sophie Hughes, who also translated Hurricane Season. And this is um, set in Mexico City where five houses clutter around a courtyard and there, where there lives Anna, who is a 12-year-old who's dealing with the mysterious death of her little sister. And she wants to plant a garden in the shared courtyard. And as she starts to dig and plant seeds, her neighbors cluster around her and they each start digging on their own. And in this process, they start to discover secrets and information and... Um, she realizes that she's not alone in having her life torn apart and uprooted. This one I think I've seen in several places. This is The Twilight Zone by Nona Fernandez, translated from the Spanish by Natasha Wimmer. And it's really easy to look or hear the title and think of the old TV show. Was that in the 50s? I wasn't born. I don't know. <laughs> I think it was from the 50s. I don't, I don't know how long it, it ran. Um, this is set in 1984, the year of my graduation, at the deadly height of the Pinochet dictatorship. And it's a um, politically centered novel. Um, a member of the, Ch the Chilean secret police walks into the office of a dissident magazine and testifies to a reporter. And the headline becomes, I Tortured People. And the narrator becomes obsessed with this um, this dictator who confessed that. And going decades later, um, she is haunted by this particular confession, this public confession. And story ensues from there. This one, unfortunately, not unfortunately, but it was a former library copy. Brand new, but they put the stickers on the title. And this is Loop by B Brenda Lozano, translated from the Spanish. She is a Mexican author by Annie McDermott. And I hate that they, this is one of those stickers that you really can't take off. Um, this is the narrator is recovering from an accident and she finds herself in many different types of waiting rooms, including waiting at home for her boyfriend who has traveled to Spain following the death of his mother. And this is kind of a love story told from the perspective of a narrator named Penelope. And she's not unraveling, but she's writing things down in this ideal notebook. And I think it's supposed to be somewhat humorous, but um, yeah, it's kind of a series of journal entries. And that is Loop by Brenda, can you see that? Nope, it's upside down. By Brenda Lozano. <laughs> I wish they hadn't put the stickers there. This one is August by Romina Paula. And this is translated from the Polish, from the Spanish 
by Jennifer Croft. Jennifer Croft also translated um, The Books of Jacob by Olga Tokarczuk. And this one, you can't really see that very well. This is a tangled homecoming tale. A young woman returns to rural Patagonia to scatter the ashes of her childhood friend who has committed suicide five years prior. She's 21 years old and her name is Amelia and she might still be living, but she's discontent and apathetic. Um, she finds herself immersed in the same streets, same faces, same people of her childhood. And um, if her friend's death felt surreal from Buenos Aires at home, the absence becomes a visceral confrontation between then and now. And that's a quote from the back of the book. And I really like this cover. This one is Eve Out of Her Ruins by Ananda Devi. And this was translated from the French by Jeffrey Zuckerman. This is, um, it's told from four different threads, monologues from children on the cusp of adulthood. Um, her four narrators come to life in heartbreaking detail. Eve, whose body is her only weapon and source of power. Savita, Eve's best friend and the only one who loves Eve without self-interest and who has plans to leave but won't go alone. Sadiq, a gifted would-be poet inspired by Rimbaud in love with Eve. And Clelio, belligerent rebel waiting without hope for his brother to send for him from France. So it's kind of four different perspectives, all young people. Um, and it's talking about the part of Mor Mauritius as far from being an idyllic vacation location um, and far from being innocent. Their lives are filled by violence and fear. So really, this, they sound, all of these sound so interesting. Now this one, this name, this was a difficult one. This I found in a used bookstore. This is in a, a Europa edition. And it's the Jasmine Isle, written in, translated from Greek. The author's name is Iona Karistiani. I think I have that right. And it was translated from Greek by Michael Eleftherio. Eleftheriou from the Greek. And it's set on a breathtaking island named Andros. Um, this is the story of two sisters and a despotic, evil mother. She is a, uh, the wife of a ship captain, um, Savas Saltiferos. She has tyrannical influence over her two daughters, and it's unrelenting. Tragedy becomes inevitable when Mina's beautiful eldest daughter, Orsa, is sentenced by her mother to marry a man she does not love and is forced to watch as the man she does love marry somebody else. So all that, that type of mother-daughter dynamic, especially when it's like an evil mother character, always good, always a good story. This one is I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Harpman. This is translated from the French by Raz Schwartz. And this cover I love as well. This is deep, I'm going to read this one. Deep underground, 39 women live imprisoned in a cage. Watched over by guards, these women have no memory of how they got there, no notion of time, and only vague recollections of their lives before. As the burn of electric light merges day into night and numberless years pass, a young girl, the 40th prisoner, sits alone and outcast in the corner. But soon she will show herself to be the key to the other's escape and survival in the strange world that awaits them above. That sounds super creepy, but the title alone um, hooked me, completely hooked me. The last one I have, this one was um, very much anticipated. This is The Wind Whistling in the Cranes, my only hardcover, by Lydia Georges. And this was translated from the Portuguese by Margaret Jewel Costa and Annie McDermott. This one is, this is, this is a really pretty book, really pretty hardcover. Um, this is called a saga set in the now distant 1990s. I can't believe how distant they are. Um, it's 
Landlords and tenants of a derelict canning factory in southern Portugal, the wealthy, always scheming Leandros, have owned the building since before the Carnation Revolution, a peaceful coup that toppled a four-decade-long dictatorship and led to Portugal's withdrawal from its African colonies. It was Leandro matriarch Dona Regina who handed the keys to the Matas, the bustling family from Cape Verde who saw past the dusty machinery and converted the space into a warm and inviting home. However, Dona Regina is found dead outside the factory on a holiday weekend, her body covered in black ants, and her granddaughter Mylene investigates. So good. That sounds so good. So, yeah. That is it for my pile of translated fiction. What I would like to do is kind of travel around the world, metaphorically, and find books from a lot of other places, find African novels, um, Australian that I won't have to buy in translation, but I do want to look for novels, um, obviously published in English because I don't read any of the language, um, South American novels, uh, Asian novels. I have many in my collection already, but I still want to purposefully look around the world for translated novels that are interesting and, and um, want to support different authors. And some of these are their first publications in English. And I really enjoy that. These all sound terrific. So if any of them sound good to you, let me know in the comments below. Uh, let me know what you think of any of the books I talked about. I'm probably going to go eat a cookie now. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.